And hello, we are coming to you live from the Sandra Seacat Virtual Theater with our grand opening of our Friday night readings. We are so excited to have you here with us tonight. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> we have some really incredible um, programming happening um, for you tonight. And it's brought to you by the Artist Corner. The Artist Corner is part of Arizona Actors Academy response to our COVID-19 situation because it is our goal to make sure that artists all around the globe have a place where they can go to feed their artist soul. And so we provide wonderful events like this one that you are a part of right now tonight, as well as free classes and an extraordinary blog where we just share things that both lift us up and also galvanize us as artists. And we are so, so excited to have you here with us tonight. If I haven't already said it, my name is Rachel Grimes and I will be your host. Um, tonight, let me give you a rundown of kind of how things are going to go. We have our distinguished and incredible playwright, Tom Cavanaugh, who is going to join us just here in a little bit. And he has allowed us to read three of his short plays tonight. So what you'll see is we'll, I'll get to invite Tom to the screen. We'll talk for a little bit just about him and his work and process as a writer. And then uh, we'll invite the actors to the screen who are going to read in the first play. You'll get to hear a little bit about them and then we'll jump right in. I'll disappear and leave um, as well as Tom and you'll hear my voice as a voiceover, just giving you a setting for the beginning. And then the magic will start between our actors. And then we'll come back, Tom and I, in between each scene, um, I'm sorry, each short play and set everything up. And we're gonna have a wonderful night of some really great theater. All right. So without much ado, let me start to introduce you to our incredible playwright, Tom Cavanaugh. Tom Cavanaugh received his MFA in playwriting from the Actors Studio Drama School in 2000. Tom has had his short plays and full plays produced all around the nation. Um, and won a 2011 Pickering Award for Excellence in Playwriting. He uh, recently, his short, his play, Coyote, was listed by Theater of Action in Los Angeles' plays about immigration, which is a pretty wonderful thing. All right, Tom, we're gonna invite you to the screen. Hooray! Yeah, there we go. Hey, Rachel, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you, Tom? Good, thanks. Good. We are so delighted to have you with us oh, here. It's an today. honor. It's a real honor to be here. And thank you so oh. much for having me and having oh. the show. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so fun. I, I have to tell you, I laughed a lot reading all of these stories. Oh, good, 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 good. Yes. Yeah, I'm, so yeah. I'm really excited to bring them to our audience tonight. I just have a couple of questions just about sure. you and your, yeah, and your experience as a playwright. Um. One of the things that I've found whenever I sit down to try to write, not that I've done that much, is that I'll get in this funk of nothing is ever perfect or nothing is ever good enough. Does that ever happen to you? Do you, Or do you usually start writing and have a clear picture of what you'd like to do? Um, with me, I usually get an idea and it'll it'll be based on something. And then I'll think about it, think about it, not consciously, it'll just work its way. And then... I have a routine that I have to sit down daily and write. I have to sit down, and even when I'm at work, because I have a great survival job where I work as a 911 operator, and mm. I got used to having my laptop next to me for downtime. So in between downtime, I would write, and it just, I don't worry about if it's gonna be perfect then. I worry about if it's gonna be perfect in front of an audience or in front of a workshop audience. Will they like it? Will it? Will I get the message across? Is it going to be? A, is it going to bomb? Because it happens. You get all of the above, but that's when I'm worried about it being perfect. Like I won't eat before a show. My brother and my family members would always think I was nuts that there was something wrong. But I, you know, I had I I it was just worry then. That's when I worry whether it's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. or not. Yeah, no, that's the same for me. I can never eat before a show. Yeah, I just, <laughs> right. It, it's like as a writer and a director, I'll, I'll wait till later. But I had a t teacher once that I always remember: a hungry tiger fights stronger. And that oh. I keep that in the back of my mind that that's why I'm doing it. I but love the that. truth is I want that perfection. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, I think we all really desperately right. want that perfection. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I, you know, of course, there's always in our imperfections that we find the really gorgeous things. Right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so you have your routine. Do you ever, do you have like a, a lucky charm or something that you do when things start to get stuck? Like a, uh, maybe like a book or a, a jar that you pull ideas out of or something Not, you do to shake I, I, Well, I have to always, this is where I write, where I'm at now. This is my home office. I have to have a window. There has to be a window near me. And usually the window is I can see out and see the sky. It's it's something I, my dad's desk in his office growing up, which I ended up doing my homework at, was underneath a window. And when I would be stuck, I would look up and stare at the sky. And to me, the sky is a blank page or a blank stage mm. or a blank, blank, blank movie screen. And even when, I, especially when I would be directing a play, um, a lot of times I'd be at work, I'd read the script and I'd put it aside and, and I'd just sit there and stare. And my friends would be, because they're not, they were civilians, right? They weren't in theater or, or film. And they would say, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm watching the show. I'm like, what do you mean you're watching the show? Like, I just read the script. Now I have the show in my head and I got it. And that happens to me. Like I'll start to write, write, write a lot of, I've only had writer block once in my life. I never have writer's block. If you, if you give me wow. now a situation I can give you 15 pages in the next hour to two hours. And it's, and I thought everybody worked like that. And then when I went to Hollywood, I've learned they didn't. But what I do when I get to the point where I just look, I sit back and I'll look out the window and then, and I'll per what I call percolate, which is really ruminating but yeah. I percolate on it. And a lot of times I'm watching the show in the sky or I'm watching, I'm watching the words. It just mm -hmm. depends on what it is. So. But yeah, yeah the window is the thing I always have near my desk. Yeah, I love that. The um, my home office now, you know, during the time of COVID nineteen, is filled with windows, and it's the best. It's the best. Yeah, you you feel you feel both outside and inside, like there are yeah. no real limits. Yeah, there's no limits whatsoever. If you have a blue sky in front of you, you can do anything. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, all right, one more question before we start to dive into these really fun plays. Um, I want to know if you could give any advice to an actor who's working on an original piece for the very first time. What, what advice might you give? First of all, memorize everything as is. Mm -hmm. I'm not a stickler for when the words are changed or the beats are changed, but like, I was just recently reading up on Terrence McNally since he passed, was down to a comma. And I know people, my friends that are like, they'll tell you, no, that was, should be A, not A, ah, and they'll, they'll give you that direction. Me, I, I love when somebody is so, they've got the lines down cold and they really explore character as in what, because I, I will get to the point I don't know. I don't want to know when they're my words. I don't want them to be my words anymore. Mm -hmm. I want them to be your words. I want every night to look original. I want every night to look fresh. And that means the actor is making great choices. And I had a teacher that said, your talent is in your choices. And that's the truth of it. Great actors make great mm -hmm. choices. The actors you like to watch on screen or watch on stage are making brave, bold choices. But they've got the craft down and they've got the words down and they've got the rehearsal down that there's mm -hmm. nothing for chance anymore, except that talent's going to cook. And my, I, there, there will be times where I'll sit and I don't know where my, if my words are wrong, because I don't ah. care them, because there's this honest, great, truthful, talented performance coming on stage. That's a gift. And that's what I look for. I look for the actor that's yeah. going to come in with the lines down cold and try to do character i don't want to say character work because it's kind of one-dimensional but bring it to life in that way i'm i mean my writing is very influenced by method acting and if you're putting yourself yeah. in circumstances and i'm believing you and you're doing it truthfully you can't do anything wrong i love that that's wonderful thank you you got some great quotes already that i, I had some great <laughs> teachers <laughs> I have oh, some yes. really great teachers and I've had some great experiences. I just uh, haven't had, I am still trying to get my commercial hit. 
and that's that's everybody tries that's, that's everybody you're right right yeah. as, a, as a writer you that's what you want you know that's your next thing yeah all right well maybe one of these plays will be that commercial <laughs> hit we will see <laughs> all right so um the very first play that we're gonna read tonight is called after work so is there anything that you want our um, audience or our actors to think about before we jump in and introduce our actors for this no, let, 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 let them do their thing and I'll tell you about how that came about later, yeah. Oh, perfect. All right. So uh, um, in a, just here in a little bit, we're going to have Evan O. Bayashi read for the role of Matt. Evan has been training under Brandy Hotchner here at the um, Arizona Actors Academy for quite a while. He's also trained under Sandra Seacat, Sandra Seacat and Gabe Fabio. Recently, Evan was in a stage reading of Red Wool, which is a new play, Jeremy Carrican. All right, Evan, let's welcome you to the screen. Hey, Evan, yay. We're so delighted to have you here tonight to read for Matt. Thank you. And then our second actor um, for this play is Tristan Heath. Um, Tristan has been also been studying under Brandy Hotchner at Arizona Actors Academy, but um, originally came from Texas and decided he wanted to try out our cacti ridden state. We are so very glad that you did, Tristan. Um, let's welcome you to the screen. Hey. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good, good. We are so happy to have you here. All right, Tom, this is where you and I disappear and the actors get to do their work. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide us in a second. All right, actors, have some fun. I'm gonna see what he wants for me. Got me off work, Tom, sir. After work, an apartment night. Matt is his desk, a drink next to him, he's face down on the desk when there's a knock at the front door to his apartment. Matt gets up from the desk, picks up the drink. There's another knock on the door. <clears throat> I'm coming. Oh. <sighs> What's up? What's up? You called me. I did. You said it was an emergency. Did I? Oh, yeah. That was uh, that was that was that was hours ago. It was two hours ago. Hmm, well, it felt longer. Two hours ago, you said it was an emergency, and I said after work I'll be coming over. Oh, you're done with work. Yeah, I'm done with work. Oh, what you want? What do I want? You called me. <clears throat> She's dead. Who's dead? Homeless girl. Homeless girl. Homeless girl. Homeless girl. Yeah. How dead? Dead, dead. <laughs> what do you mean, how dead? I mean, how did she die? Not sure. Maybe a, a bullet to the head? A bullet to the head is pretty definite. Well, depends on which bullet and whose head. Somebody shot her? <clears throat> maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Well, we don't know how the bullet got there. That's supposed to be sipping whiskey. Well, now it's gulping whiskey. <laughs> the way you're drinking and acting, don't be offended, but I've, I've got to ask you something. Did you, uh, did you shoot her? Did I shoot who? Homeless girl. What are we here for? Me? Why would I shoot homeless girl? Something in your actions is coming across as... As, as what? A little weird and a little guilty. I didn't shoot homeless girl. Well, good. I was trying to sleep with her. 
I never understood that whole thing. Me trying to sleep with homeless girl, what's there to understand? What? Well, she, she, she was homeless. Yeah, well, okay, what do you think? Uh, all homeless people are, are smelly and, and dirty and crazy? No. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Right, some people are homeless because, you know, here. <clears throat> some people are homeless because they're just going through something and they're just trying to work it out. You know, does she look homeless to you? Hmm? She's gorgeous. Exactly. And she sleeps in the shelter? She goes back every night for a cot. A cot? Well, it ain't the Hilton, moron. What did you think? <laughs> I don't know what to think. It's never made sense to me. This huge crush you had on homeless girl that was begging for change outside of 7-Eleven. She was not begging. She wasn't? It's called spanking. Spanking. Yeah, spare changing. Asking for spare change. <laughs> Sitting outside on the ground and asking strangers for money with a paper cup? It sounds like begging. Well, it ain't. There's a difference. I know you're mourning and all, but I've got to ask you. What's the difference between spanking and begging? Because it sounds like the same thing to me. What? <laughs> Nothing. No, if you got something to ask, just ask it. When you talked about homeless girl in the past, I didn't think she mattered to you. Why is that? Because you never told me or any of our friends her real name. I didn't? You've never told any of us her real name. We all just thought you didn't care about her. And by not saying her name, it made it easy for you to do whatever it is that you do. What I do? What are you talking? We all know when you don't want to get attached to a person, you give them a, a nickname. You never say their real name. <laughs> I don't do that. Sure you do. Bullshit. The Mexican girl at work? What about her? What's her name? The Mexican girl. No, her real name. Um, Lupe. No. Consuela. You don't know her name. Oh, sure I do. It's, uh, it's, uh, okay, you know, fine. So what? I don't know her name. Because she doesn't matter to you. That's all I'm saying. She doesn't count to you. A couple of nicknames. Big deal. When you tell a story, every other person has a nickname. Well, homeless girl's different. Really? She was smart and, and funny. And, uh, and? And she liked me for me. I mean, I mean, she really liked me. It doesn't happen all the time. What would you do if you finally met someone that really liked you and the only thing holding you back from loving each other is because she's homeless and has nowhere to live. What would you do? I don't know. No, 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 no. You do know. You'd like her back. You'd, you'd love her back and, and you'd, you'd, you'd want to take her in. It's not that easy. Exactly. So? What would you do? I'd, I'd have to think about it. And um, I'm not sure. Did she, uh, you know? They, uh, they think so. 
Do you think so? I don't know. I don't know. They found her in this uh, in this guy's truck in front of his house. She either did it herself or the guy did it. They met in a bar, had a fight earlier last night. No, no one really knows what happened. I'm so, sorry, man. Thanks. Now what? I don't know. I'm a little confused about everything. I bet. Here's the homeless girl. Her name was Carrie. Really? It's not something I need to lie about, you dim bulb. <laughs> Don't get mad, I'm just asking. You freaking dim bulb. Now's not the time to be asking stupid questions. <laughs> dim bulb, is that, is that what you name me? Is that the nickname you gave me when I'm not around? That's uh, a... <laughs> That's a, that's a conversation for another day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Here's to Carrie. I've always known her name. I purposely didn't tell my friends her name. In case we met her? I don't want you to know that she was homeless girl. I just, I just wanted you to accept her as Carrie. Wow. I told you, she was different. Lights out. All right. All right, Tom, we're gonna invite you back to the screen. Okay. All right, and I'm getting myself back here too. Just give me a second. <laughs> All right. All right. Great work, guys. Really, really, really good work. Thank you so much. Really, really nice choices. Really, really good work. It's not easy on this thing to do what you guys did, and that was really nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anything you want to say about the about the play now that we want to do our read? For me? Yeah, from you. Um, it was um, it came up in a workshop at the National Playwright Symposium under the guidance uh, from playwright Hallie Pfeffer for Pfeiffer. She wrote mm -hmm. uh, Moscow, Moscow, Mascot out that was just off Broadway and a bunch of other plays that have been on, and um, it's based on a true story. It's based on a girl I met in LA that either shot herself or was murdered. We still don't know. At 23 wow. years old, yeah. So it's all it's a, it's it's based on the night that she died, and how it surfaced uh, eight or nine years later last summer at the symposium, and um, and we we uh, yeah, we rehearsed it and uh, workshopped it and went back and rewrote it and all within three days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was good for it was good for me to get it out, but it's just a it's just a good story that about two guys. It's really about best friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we could all tell. Yeah, and they tell. Yeah. The guys did it. The guys yeah. Mailed, so yeah, really, it was wonderful. Really, really happy with it. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Tristan. I'm gonna go ahead and, and hide your video now. Yeah, bye. Thanks. All right, so um, our second play of the evening is Mr. Pickman. And uh, I am so very excited to introduce to you our actresses for this um, particular play. We are going to invite to the screen in just a little bit here, Brandy Hotchner, who's going to play Lisa. Um, Brandy Hotchner grew up in the theater and she graduated um, with a BA in directing from the University of Redlands and an MFA in acting from the Actors Studio um, 
MFA acting school. Um, along the way, Brandy got training from uh, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts teachers in London for Shakespeare and has worked with Arthur Penn, Ellen Burstyn and Vivian Nathan among others. Um, for me, she is my, my mentor and um, one of my guiding lights in, in acting. And I'm so delighted and excited that she gets to be here tonight to read for us for this role. Um, probably most importantly for you to know is that she's the artistic director and founder of Arizona Actors Academy as well. All right, Brandy, let's invite you to the stage. Hello, hello. Hello. That's my <laughs> tongue. Boy, that's a that introduction. Oh, uh, my goodness. I my, my great mentors are, of course, Sandra Seacat and Barbara Poitier. Yes. Um, oh, yes. So, um, Without further ado, we are tonight are going to have Miss Sandra Seacat herself um, play Sylvia. Sandra's bio is so incredible, I almost feel a little ridiculous reading from it. Um, uh, but mostly, I think she just has the best taste in music of any person I have ever met in my life. Um, she really knows how to get you grooving and excited. Um, Sandra is a distinguished acting coach, actor, and director who has worked with Broadway film and television. Um, she, among some of the biggest names in Hollywood of people she's worked with is Mickey Rourke, Jessica Lange, Laura Dern, Ryan Gosling, Colin Farrell, Andrew Garfield, Michelle Williams, and on and on and on and on. Um, we are so very excited to have um, Sandra with us tonight. All right, Sandra, let's welcome you to the screen and the namesake for our virtual theater. Yes, she is. Yay, thank you, Sandra, for being here with us tonight for our grand opening. We're so delighted to have you. All right. You say something, Sandra, so I'm sure that, you're, that we can hear you. Oh, I just realized one of my first lines is, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. All right, so without further ado, and I will vacate the screen so that the magic can begin. One second. Mr. Pickman, a short play by Tom Kavanaugh. Scene one, living room day. Sylvia is in the living room folding laundry and placing it in a laundry basket. Ma! Ma? Hello? In here. I'm sorry. I'm in a rush. I gotta get to work. These are yours. Thank you so much for helping me with this. I love that you still love to do my laundry. Well, yeah, you're still my kid. And I, I know. I ran out of here last night and Hey, I think we accidentally switched our phones. What? Mom? Mr. Dick Pickman, who is he? What? Well, Mr. Dick Pickman, who is he? I, I don't know any. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know him either. I mean, I, if I were ever to meet him face to face. I wouldn't know. What are you talking about? Well, it seems that somehow last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I must have accidentally grabbed your phone when I was leaving. Oh my God. See, now that's exactly what I said three o'clock this morning when, when my phone went off. I was staring at a picture from Mr. Dick Pickman. See? Oh, wait, 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 my mistake. His name is Big Dick. See? See here? From Big Dick Pickman. All one word. Um, no spaces. Oh, my bad. It's not my, it's not Pickman. It's Pickman. I'm sorry. 
Mr. Big Dick Pickman. Pickman. That, that's my phone. Yeah, because it's definitely not my phone. My phone wouldn't have a picture on it from Mr. Big Dick Pickman. Pick meaning pick as in um, picture. Oh, because this is definitely a, a picture of a really big. Okay, could you could could you stop saying that? No, but look, this is a really big. I'm I mean a close up picture of a huge, really big. Stop saying that. And what's penis pie? Nothing. No, it has to be something. Well, it is something, just not something I want to discuss with my- Your mother? Let's forget I'm your mother for now. And well, let's just be two women of the world. I'm open-minded. I read men from Mars, women from Venus. I voted for Hillary. Ma, Ma. I'm just not familiar with the culinary creation, penis pie. Please explain. It's, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's not, it's not something I feel comfortable explaining to my, um, to my mother. Yes, you know it was really a bit of a shock. I pick up my phone, I place my finger on what I think is the Tagacat app, you know, planning to on falling asleep while looking at cute, adorable kitties from around the world, and all of a sudden I get penis pie. Oh my God, this is a nightmare. Picture on picture on picture of men, naked men with pie hanging on their penis. Ma! That's what it was. That's what I saw. I mean, did did we really send you to Brandeis for this? No, but, but. Well, do you think this in, is entertaining or are you just killing time looking at? Okay. It's an income. What? How many pictures did you look at? Does that matter? Yes, it does. I don't know. Five? Four, I mean, six, maybe. Okay, you earned me $3. They pay you? To look and comment. I look and they pay me 50 cents. And for a comment, it's a dollar a picture. For pie penis. Penis pie. Sorry, penis pie. They pay you a dollar for every time you come in on a picture of a penis full of pie. Could you, could you stop saying that? What bothers, you? what bothers you? What I say, penis or pie? Both. But it doesn't bother you to look. Well, that's different. Why? Why is it different? Because when you say it, it sounds, I don't know, dirty. Well, it is. Yeah, yeah, but when I'm looking at it, it's it's not dirty at all. It, it's kind of it's kind of fun. No, no, no. No, no, what? Fun is going to the beach. Fun mm. is a roller coaster ride. Fun is not raiding filthy, degenerate, sycophants with a sort of fish falling off of their genitals. Ma! I don't understand. Oh it bothers you what I, when I say it, but when you look at it, it's fun. I can't explain it. It's just, it, it just is. And as a, as a matter of fact, I shouldn't have to explain it to you. And I shouldn't be explaining it to you. I, 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 I should be explaining this to my therapist after work today, which I'm late for now. Fine. But why is Mr. Big Dick 
pick man sending you pictures at three o'clock in the morning. Just random guys like to do that. So stop mumbling. Cause random guys like to do that. But why? I, I don't know why they just do. How did they get your phone number? Off my website. Okay, mumbling again, come on. Off, off my website. What website? W, W, W dot cream pie baker dot com. Huh? I'm the cream pie baker. You bake cream pies? Uh, in a matter of speaking, yes. This is something they pay you for? Yes. Do they come to your house? Oh God, no, I'm not a, I, I don't do that. What do you do? Ship the cream pies? Huh? If you bake the pies here, you have to get them to the customer some, somehow. No, um, they pay for pictures I create. And do you know what? I'm not explaining this anymore. Can I have my phone back? Sure. Here. Here. What? Marty Cohen. You went into my photo rolls? For God's sake. I didn't do anything wrong. He's our neighbor. I've known him my whole life. Since you were a baby. Since I was a baby. How could you? I'm a grown up and I shouldn't have to explain myself to anyone. I'm not anyone. I'm your mother. I've always been attracted to Mr. Cohen. So has Mrs. Cohen. They don't sleep in the same room anymore. I know, they haven't for years. How do you know? Mrs. Cohen and I still talk. They're only together for the kids. Oh, the kids are 40 and 43. They can handle it. Marty says no. A married man always denies the truth. If you call that a marriage. You can't call it anything else and, until they call it a divorce. You cannot say anything about this. As long as I'm alive, I'm still your mother. And that means I can say anything I want. You can't. Isn't that how you and daddy met? We worked together. I was a secretary. And didn't you? Oh, you know, okay. God, I hate thinking about my parents having sex. That bothers, but penis pie doesn't. Ma, ugh. Look. I don't care what you do. In fact, I'm more than sorry that I looked at your phone, but I don't know, whatever. Just, just don't get hurt and don't get sick. I won't, Ma. I worry about that. I worry about you. I know, I know. It's just because you love me. I know you love me. Come on. You love me. Okay. Can I have my phone back? Yeah. Hey. What's that app on there called? Who's your daddy.com? Ma? Blackout. Oh, so much fun. All right, Tom, we're going to invite back to the.
I can't hear. It. Hey Tom, wait, you're still um, you're still muted. Here we go. So I kept laughing out loud and I laughed a lot and I kept getting this message that said you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> so it was so much fun, so great. It's such an honor, both of you. Oh so my I god. Really loved it. We had so much fun with this. Oh good. Rehearsing, right, Sandra? Yeah, right, a rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because that's what I hope for always with it. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Any last thoughts that you have, Tom, about about this piece? Was well, was you know, it, also it, um, it came upon uh, it, it. It came about because I was working in these theater groups in L.A. at the time, and they were loaded with female actresses and, and you know female actors, and people wouldn't write for them. And it was it was really strange to me that because I've always I've always preferred to write for women because people were ignoring them and in these groups they were still ignoring them, and and it just came about one time when, you know that time when people were starting to learn how to make money off the internet, and I forget somebody was was saying her daughter he caught her daughter doing some strange stuff or was a teenage daughter I'm like what if you just happen to swap phones. <laughs> and then I went home and wrote it. I'm like, oh my God, what if they swapped phones by accident? And the pictures came in and that's how that came about. But it really came about because I had these great women in these theater groups that nobody was writing for. God, mm -hmm. God. It's really, and, and yeah. to me, it was just, it was, I was always like, why did they just, you know, it, it, that's the crux of the theater company, right? For the women. Yes. <laughs> you know, from, so. Yeah, well, the, we definitely appreciate that, Tom. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Especially when it brings us such joy. The funny thing with this one is it um it premiered at the Short and Sweet Festival in Hollywood. Then it got picked up by a theater and note in Hollywood that same summer. And then it went through the Short and Sweet Festival and played in the Philippines. And the funny thing in the Philippines, I thought it was a joke. They wrote me and they said, would you mind if we did this with men only? And I said, I really did. I'm like, somebody's like messing with me. I thought it was a joke. And then they wrote me again. They're like, no, seriously, would you mind? They said, it's our tradition in our theater for comedy for men to dress like women and play these kind of roles. And supposedly it was a really huge hit in the Philippines. I didn't make it for that one. <laughs> And it, but it was a gender bender at the same time. It's totally wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That does blow the mind a little bit. Yeah, it was totally like, because I actually, like, I couldn't believe them when they, like I said, the first email, I'm like, nah, somebody's jerking me. This is, a, this is a joke. But it was real. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. So fun. I love all the history that these plays have. Well, I, 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 I write a lot. I write a lot. Uh, <laughs> Which is wonderful. Would, I always have a stack somewhere of a place for somebody to read. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sandra and um, Brandy. Yeah, we'll invite you back at the end. And I just want our audience to know too, if you have questions for Tom or any of our actors, feel free to put them in the comments right over on the side of your screen that you'll see in YouTube. Okay, we're gonna say goodbye to Brandy and Sandra here. We'll see you in a little bit. And then All right, and our last play of the evening is a play called Workshopping. Um, playing the role of Lenny, we have the amazing Mitch Tez. Mitch has been studying under um, Brandy Hotchner at Arizona Actors Academy since 2007, 2015. He has also studied with Sandra Seacat, Gabe Fazio, and John Patrick Chanley. We'd love to welcome you to our screen, uh, Mitch. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, we're, <laughs> hi, we're so glad to have you with us tonight. All right, and reading for the role of Abby, we have the incredible Elizabeth Woodworth. She has also been studying with Brandy Hotchner since 2014, so she's got Mitch beat by a year. She is currently signed with Danny's Agency and has appeared in several local short films. 
she made her theatrical debut um, in Rochester Nights, which Mitch was also in, um, in April of 2019. Her favorite role to date is Donna from a Dreamer Examines His Pillow by John Patrick Shanley. So our last two actors are lovers of Shanley, as am I. Yes. All right, Lizzie, let's welcome you to our screen. Hello. Hello. Yay, we're so excited to have you with us tonight. All right, Tom, we get to play the disappearing act one more time. All right. And, ooh. All right, Workshopping by Tom Cavanaugh. Scene one, a theater. Lenny and Abby sit in a theater. They are watching a staged reading. Just a few chairs on stage, nothing else. What are we watching? Can't you tell? Aren't we both watching the same thing? Son of, this is that Larry guy. I thought you said he wasn't on stage this week. How come he never picks us to act in any of his readings? Uh, man, if I knew it was one of his plays, I would have went to the bathroom. Please stop complaining. I mean, it's only 20 pages. 20 pages is a lifetime. It is not, just behave. I'm behaving. <clears throat> then stop whining. I'm not. Will you just stop? Don't start getting loud. I'm not getting loud. Sure you're not. What's that face for? When you say you're not doing something, it means that you're really doing it, but you just don't want me to know that you're doing it. Oh, I have no idea or understanding what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> ah, shit. Not again. What again? I forgot to feed the cats once, and now you never let up. I did not mention the cats, did I mention cats? Yeah, yeah, sure you did. You're guilt-ridden. I am not. <laughs> Sorry. I'm really sorry. He's just he's just loud. <clears throat> you had to do that. Do what? Point out that I'm loud. You tend to forget your inside voice. Inside voice? What Shh. am I nine? Shh, that, see what I mean? Just. Shh. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. That's that's just exactly what I'm talking about. Did you hear what I said? Hmm? Hmm. And now you're just going to ignore me? I'm not ignoring you. I'm watching Larry, what's his name's play. <laughs> you don't even know his name. What are you kidding me? This is Larry, what's his name? The guy that never does rewrites. That is not his real name. Well, that's my name for him. Larry, what's his name? That, that's your name for him. Well, not to his face. You don't even know his real name. I don't have to. Everyone knows his name. Larry, that doesn't do rewrites. That is stupid. Name calling? No, I didn't call you a name. I called what you said a name. Oh, the same thing. It is not. <sighs> I can't believe this. This is the same exact play he read here about six weeks ago. No changes. He didn't change a thing. Well, he must have. I mean, they wouldn't have let him back on the stage if he didn't change anything. He didn't change anything. He never changes anything. He had to change something. No, he never does. That's why he's called Larry. That doesn't do rewrites. <laughs> what? I thought you said his name was Larry. <laughs> What's his name? Called that too, but he's also, wait a minute, wait. 
This part's new. Yeah, I told you. They wouldn't let him back if he didn't do rewrite. What did that character just say? I don't know. I can't hear the play because you are so loud. Hold on. Hold on. He just said, I forget to feed the cats once and you never let up on it. He did not. No, seriously, that guy just said that. I forget to feed the cats once and you never let up on it. Well, it's art imitating life. That's too on the nose. That's weird. No, a lot of husbands forget to feed the cats. Um, does that character look like me? You're just being paranoid. I'm not being paranoid. But that character, he kind of looks like like me? And wait, did you hear that? Yeah. She just said, use your inside voice. So? That's a little weird. It's a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. No. That's some, like, weird. Your mother's flying from Vegas. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. You said that two weeks ago about my mother. Uh, yeah, was he sitting behind us or something? Well, must have been. I mean, why would he write about us? I don't know. I'm not that interesting. I know, right? Wait, you, wait. You don't find me interesting? What, what did they say now? No, not they, you. Me. You just said that I'm not that interesting. I did not say that. You did, I heard you. Am I boring? Am I, am I putting your feet to sleep? <laughs> Can you just, just leave that alone, okay? You know that leave, I have that. Leave me alone, I have poor circulation. The girl just said that on stage. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so having a word with Larry. Wait, wait, just let, let, let's just see what happens. Let's... We <laughs> are what happens next. Maybe, maybe the play has a great ending. Or maybe, maybe he, maybe he no likes talent. Him, like talent. No. This is the only way he can create something new. Yeah, by, by listening to us and putting it on the stage. Us putting us on stage. Who the hell does he think he is? He doesn't love her anymore and he wants to leave. Oh. But he, but he doesn't want to lose his low rent apartment. Wait, did I say that? I never said that. Yeah, but are you thinking it? <sighs> as soon as this is over, I'm going to smack the shit out of Larry. What's his name? You didn't answer my question. I know, I know. Is that what you're thinking? I'm an actor. I think a lot of things. It doesn't mean that they're my real thoughts. They're just thoughts. I'm an actor too, and I don't have any unreal thoughts. You know, my thoughts are my feelings. They are how I feel under the circumstances. That's 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 because you're a method actor. I'm more of a Meisner guy. <sighs> yeah, you're just a guy. But I'm, I'm a woman. Huh? Huh? Exactly. Look, I didn't, I didn't say these things. They're just lines in Larry's lousy play. Yeah, lines that just sound real similar to the words that we would say. Play's not over yet. No, it isn't. Plenty. Yeah. I'm scared. Let's just see how it turns out. We saw this place six months ago. I mean, we know how it turns out. Larry doesn't do rewrites. Endings can change, can't they? I hope so. Freaking Larry, what's his name? 
I don't know his name, but he just, he doesn't do rewrites. Blackout. All right, thank you, actors. All right, Tom. There we go. There we go. Great work, really great work. Really very funny. Even we, <laughs> you know, even on here, it's it, it. You guys really deliver it. You did it for real. It's just nice job, guys. Nice job. That you look on the that last look on his face at the end was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> thanks tom thank it you fun. it's very fun that one has a gut punch of an ending for sure yeah it does yeah it does yeah <laughs> that's very good anything you want to add about this play tom um that one um when i first moved back here in 2018 to the east coast uh i wanted to crack naked angels new york and you basically have to be audience for a year. It's un, it's it's unspoken, or it just worked out that way. So I kept submitting my stuff, and for one year I sat in the audience, like hoping I would get picked, hoping I would get picked, and I never got picked. Till, and then I wrote this in my head while I was watching their work, because there's a lot of couples. It's a very social, active group. Even their 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 zooms get like 125 people, and every Tuesday at nine, you guys should like sit in sometime just to say it. They're doing Zooms from Naked Angels, New York, Miami, Chicago, and LA, all in their different time zones. So people like bounce around now cause of Zoom, but any regular night without a virus, we'd all be in New York at Tuesday at nine o'clock. And it'd be about a hundred people. The audience is always packed. It's like a big deal. So I wrote this, because there's a lot of couples in this, it's been around forever. And I'm like, well, what if you were in the audience? I always do what ifs. And I'm like, what if they started to speak from their lives? And that's where it came about. And then the next year, this was, this is how they opened up the 2019 season <laughs> of workshops with this play. But I never told them the truth about it. Maybe they'll know now <laughs> that it was written in the audience based on them. So it was fun. Oh, and, that's also, so and, and there is a real Larry, but he's in Los Angeles, and that's an all another story. <laughs> okay, I love how your plays always seem to be based in reality in some way. I that's hope so. I try, you know, I try. But yeah, yeah I, I really want them to be actor pieces. I want to be able for the actors to have fun with them, dig into them, and especially now, it's it's a it, you know, ten minute plays are a playwright's calling card, and a lot of times these plays all these plays are, are have been submitted to festivals and have been done in festivals or were about to be this was about to be done in a festival in new york that it won and got canceled because of the virus it might come back next year we don't even know but what happens is you meet these theater companies and they're like you know we want to read you and this is the calling card that gets them to read it so you know to have polished 10 minute plays is 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 just part of your toolkit now it wow. represents you and people do it. And, and a lot of times they'll get published, but it really is to get, for me, is to get into the theater on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really fun. Um, I'm sure the actors tonight will agree, but for me too, I love being into short plays because there's so much that you get to add. Yeah, you do. Right, as an actor. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I write on that, you know, if you ever write your 10 minute, play, you know, it's, it's 10 pages but I try to give it a three act structure. So the first three pages are act one, the next set of three pages is act two. Then the last three pages is your third act. And then this gives you some place to build as opposed to just writing for 10 pages and hoping you get a play. This right. gives you structure and then that extra page always helps, but it gives you the, you know, the bricks so that it, there's more than just being words on the page in the 10 minutes, mm -hmm. which sometimes happens a lot with that, so. Yeah. All right, well, I think I'm gonna invite our actors back to the screen. Please do. So we can all um, chat here for a minute. All right. Okay. Just, yep. All right, there we are all together. What a fun night, you guys. Guys, thank you so much. 
Thank you, yeah. Tom. Tom, um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, it's, such a, it's such a joy to work on these plays and to let us kick off this whole series um, with your plays and with you here, Sandra, and all of you, you know, I'm particularly proud of all of you. And um, uh, what a wonderful way to kick off this whole thing. No, oh, you're doing a great thing. This is this is much needed, and I always, um, especially it started after 9/11. But I really believe this. You guys are the artists that are going to point out the way to fix what's going on now in the world. Mm. You guys are being brave. You're putting it out there every day. You're trying new stuff. But it's going to be it's going to be the artist that says, you know what, this is wrong and this is how you fix it. And whether we do it by winning them over with comedy or winning them over drama, it's going to be the artist that point the direction eventually. I would say it's us. I teach that the greatest collaboration in um, acting is between the author and the actor. And the majority of the time, the author's not there, but they're the closest to you as you're developing the work. Oh, you guys do great work. This is not easy. I, I've been, three nights a week, I've been doing this with other groups for the last two and a half weeks. Maybe three. Wow. I think it's three weeks now. Because wow. all the New York groups have gone to Zoom. Everybody's Zooming. Sure. And the great thing is I'm starting to see actors that are making their choices while they're listening, which is what you're supposed to do anyway, but you can see it now and you can see all this stuff. And, and, and it's just going to get, it's just going to get even better as you guys keep doing this and yeah. you keep doing this in your classes and doing that. You're going to, Zoom's going to be part of a part of the, part of the skills now. And it's a great thing. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. And I mean, we, uh, we built this platform as Rachel said, and she said it so much with so much more eloquence than I will. Um, uh, but we've worked very hard on it, heartbroken at the loss of work, the loss of connection, um, the job loss, the financial strife. Artists, all artists are hit so hard by this. Yeah. And huge way. You know, the only thing that we could do is what we've done right. here. Um, and uh, Tom, you're a contributor to this series, but so many of our colleagues have jumped in to lend their expertise and their talent totally for free, only in service of this sort of much bigger, no boundaries, no state lines, yeah. no country lines, which I love about Zoom. It's really no. exciting to be here and have to be so brand new. It's a real honor that you guys invited me into this. It really is. I love that's I love when a play gets picked up somewhere that I can go there and meet the company. I want to meet the artists. I have the most fun getting to know the region, getting to know the people, and then getting to see what they do with it. And I love when it just takes off like it did tonight. You guys just take, you know, you're taking off with it. It's, it's wonderful. Wow. Really great work. Thank really, you. really a blessing. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, we have one question from sure. the audience, um, but it's actually um, for Sandra. Um, Sandra, Kurt wants to know, how do you feel now after reading? He says, difficult material to absorb, huh? <laughs> 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 well, I don't know about sharing. Who's there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to do it now. Um, standing up and with my uh, my Sylvia clothes and my Sylvia objects that surround me 
and be able to look at <laughs> yeah i you know you were already very scary I, with you i know <laughs> We'll get the cats downloaded, I promise. <laughs> promise. They're We're kind of cute cats, though. We're going to do this, baby, on our feet. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sandra's not squeamish, Kurt. <laughs> Sandra's a woman of the 70s. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go ahead and tell him I'm 83. <laughs> oh, no one would believe it. Nope, not I. Oh, well, thank you everybody so much for being here. Um, and thank you for stopping in for our live stream. We have so enjoyed having you. And we hope you have an excellent, wonderful night and that your artist soul has been fed, at least for tonight. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.